All right, what's up everybody? So I know you're not used to seeing my face, but it's kind of required in this video because I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing on the R730. Uh, I'm gonna show you some older footage that I had gathered. I've been doing this over the past week or so. Um, and the older footage, I'm gonna show it to you just because I want you guys to see what the learning experience was like for me, how confident I went into this whole project, and then the reality of what it turned out to be. It was a big pain in the butt. Um, but we got it working. The, the server is back up and running. We're running Proxmox. I'm running off of my uh, M.2 drive, my NVMe, through the PCIe slot on the R70, uh, or excuse me, the R730 XD. Uh, so, but I want you guys to see the video to see, you know, how I went into it. And then I will kind of come back to you guys now after you've seen that. And I'll explain kind of how things went after I quit making videos. Because I at one point I realized, man, this ain't going to happen anywhere near the way I thought it was going to be. So I'm just going to stop making videos. But <laughs> you'll see. You'll see. So stay tuned. This is how installation of my uh, Proxmox server after making the switch from VMware, adding storage, all that good stuff unfolded. So enjoy. Hey, what's up y'all? So I know I told y'all that I was going to be putting a bunch of shit into my R730 and today's the day. It's all pretty much basic stuff. It's just basic installation of hard drives and a PCIe adapter, but I figured I'd take you along anyway and actually show you guys my server setup as I've got it right now. It needs a lot of improvement. I actually have two uh, PowerEdge servers, but only one of them is running right now because I've been lazy. I'm sure that not all of this is server related, so give me a minute and I will unpack this so that we can see what we're actually working with. So, all right, and there we have it. This is a little concerning as it's a little, a little bent. I hope that little bastard still works. But uh, yeah, Bluey, uh, you're gonna move. So first and foremost, we've got the NVMe M.2 SSD to PCIe with aluminum heatsink. This will be nice. Originally, I was going with Western Digital, but uh, father-in-law recommended this instead. So we've got a Patriot P300 250, excuse me, 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. Uh, these are speakers for a computer I'm building, so those are irrelevant. And these three bad boys, uh, three little bastards cost me 1800 bucks. Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Daddy likes. <laughs> oh yeah. And what we have here in a mirrored image are three Iron Wolf Pro 24 terabyte hard drives for the R730 that we're going to be dropping in right now. But I'll be honest with you, I kind of dressed up for the occasion. Who am I kidding? We work from home. All right, now that we're a little more comfortable, let's go uh, make sure the server's shut down. Now I have to apologize. My server room is nowhere near as pretty as my actual studio, so you have to forgive me. It's kind of nasty down here. And you guys will be super proud of my fancy pantsy server rack and everything. <laughs> Two by fours and whatnot. Anyway, we've got the Power Edge R730 as well as the Power Edge 2950. This is the old girl. She's only got like 16 gigs of RAM, single single processor, and maybe like two or three terabytes worth of storage. So this one I'm going to reconfigure for my son to play with in the event that he ever chooses to do so. Or I might make it a little workhorse for something simple like TeamSpeak servers or something. I don't know. But this is the big boy that we'll be addressing now. So I gotta try and make this one quick because I don't have a whole lot of battery life left on my phone. I keep trying to figure out where my camera's at. Oh, there we are. All right, so first things first, we gotta deal with our SSD. On the back side of my PCIe heatsink, I've got four screws. Thankfully, it comes with a little screwdriver. Once you got that bad boy disassembled, this is what you've got. You'll notice this little fastener here. There's a screw on the back, you take that out. You then take your M.2 and you slide it right on in there like so like a glove on that you can take your fastener and slide it in get her tightened down i only got one hand and limited battery life so i got to make it quick and you can see how i have fastened the fastener it's got a little groove on the m.2 you slide it in there and slap her on down screw it on in the back once you're done you've got a completely assembled m.2 with a heat sink that we can now drop into this bad boy this is fairly straightforward just pop your panel Go ahead and take it on off. Mine's a little dirty. I haven't cleaned it in a while. You can see here I've got my GTX, I believe it's a, or excuse me, a GT710 GPU. It's just a simple cheap $50 GPU that I can use for GPU pass-through. Comes in handy with things like your Jellyfin server, stuff like that. Um, 
this is pretty simple. I'm pretty sure I've got like six different slots in here, but we go ahead and just pick one slot. I'm going to go ahead and tuck mine right on in here, like so. And just like that, we are good to go. Now, this is just a personal practice. I don't know if this is actually the way that it should be done in an enterprise environment. Since we're working on the home lab environment, it doesn't really matter. But if anyone happens to know, definitely let me know. I tend, on a situation like this, I've never actually done this before because this is the only server I've ever actually worked on. But what I'm going to do is now that I've got the M.2 drive in here, and I intend on that being my operating system drive, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pop over here and I'm going to pop all three of my primary storage devices that I've actively got in there. I'm going to yank all of these out. And what I will do from here is I will work on installing the operating system onto the M.2 before I even worry about configuring my RAID configurations for the hard drives. So without further ado, I'm going to just go ahead and get into that. I don't have time to do it on video or anything, but we're going to go ahead and attempt a Proxmox installation. Uh, I'm going to go through that and then I'm going to document all the ups and downs of how that goes. Uh, if you've seen my last video, you know that I have not actually worked with Proxmox ever before. It's a Debian based hypervisor, which cool. I'm familiar with Linux. So theoretically speaking, it shouldn't be too difficult for me to figure out, get it deployed onto the server. Once we've got Proxmox on the server, everything's configured. I will then start everything over. We'll drop in all of my hard drives and then we will configure my RAID. Probably use probably, I think I'm going to go with RAID 5. And uh, once all my hard drives are configured, I will then make a video discussing exactly what it was like installing Proxmox and uh, my ta immediate takeaways being a novice systems administrator, whatever you want to call it, and uh, experimenting with this. Because if you're anything like me, you're playing with home lab environments now. In the world of private AI on its dawn, and we're able to run our own servers, our own cloud servers and all of that, if you're capable, you might as well just do it yourself because the money that you would save in paying for services is astronomical. So that is the route that I'm going. I'm learning to configure the R730 to my likings, and uh, this is the way we're going. Uh, hopefully the M.2 will kind of perk things up a little bit, plus it'll liberate a little bit of storage on the data store. So without further ado. All right, so I figured I would just give you guys a little bit of an update after enabling the PCIe adapter inside of the R730. We're good to go. We're installing Proxmox and that's pretty self-explanatory. Having never touched it before, it's pretty self-explanatory. It really is. It's not that hard to install. Uh, just create your bootable USB drive, plug it in, boot from that drive. And it's just like any other Linux installation essentially. So I'll keep you posted. All right, so we're here a few days later and we've got our Sabrent uh, <laughs> PCIe adapter. We're going to put this off to the side. We'll use it another time. Next, we're going to put in this Super Micro PCIe adapter. The cool part about this one is that supposedly it's specifically made for these. I did not know that. See, learn something new every day. <laughs> but the cool thing I really like about this one is that it's got two slots for M.2. So if I wanted to, I could drop another one in here. I could run both Proxmox and VMware if I chose. Theoretically, of course. Anyway, let's go ahead and get this into our <laughs> big machine. Now that we've got that installed, we're going to go ahead and see if we can get Proxmox installed and actually get it to boot in. Uh, as mentioned, when I tried using this adapter, um, I was able to install Proxmox. Everything was recognized for the installation, but upon rebooting, it just it wasn't available. It said it was there, but it, you couldn't boot into it. So, yeah, let's see how this goes. All right, so back to current... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> currently in the timeline here, I quit recording after that because we just kept running into problems. And my final conclusion is that we had, we, there was no need to buy an additional HBA. No, we didn't need that additional PCIe adapter for the R730 because what it ended up being is my father-in-law found um, a, a program software, a, a bootloader called, I think it's called Clover. I'll put a link in the description below. But basically, you download this software, you transfer the proper drives or whatever into the Grub Loader, this Clover software. And we basically created a bootable USB, we plugged it into the U internal USB, and then we just basically told the R730 to boot from that USB drive, um, which allowed me to boot directly into the NVMe 
and run my Proxmox. So installations were going just fine, but for whatever reason, the R730 was incapable of booting into that M.2. It's not that it didn't recognize it, it just couldn't boot into it, which is very strange. I can't explain it all. My father-in-law understands it better than I do. But long story short, we got the Proxmox server running it's running off of the M.2, which is great. Um, and it was a great learning process. It was really cool uh, to, to discover, you know, originally the reason we bought the second PCIe adapter was because uh, we were under the impression that for whatever reason, Dell had some strange proprietary block on the PCIe uh, recognition in terms of boot. I don't understand it. I still can't explain it. All I can tell you is that we figured it out. We, we found a solution. We're able to boot into it. And now we officially have a functioning Proxmox server. So... Uh, I will elaborate a little bit more as to, you know, the process in another video, but this one's already kind of dragging on now. So I just wanted to give you guys kind of the rundown in terms of what it was like trying to get the R730 to boot into the M.2 drive um, and, and the whole process there. I'm sorry it's taken us so long. Life has been kind of getting in the way, kids getting in the way, just all kinds of stuff. But I'm still working on it. I'm still getting things back up and running. I got my Jelly Friend server back up and running. I've got to get my uh, family cloud server back up and running. And then after that, once everything, oh, once the priorities are squared away, I am going to get into creating VMs for private AI and we're gonna go down a big old rabbit hole there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what's going on. I did rearrange my studio, which is pretty cool. Um, pretty excited about that. Ooh, yeah. So yeah. Um, welcome to the studio. Sorry you had to see my ugly mug. It's not going to happen a whole lot. I prefer to just be behind the scenes and just talk to you guys and, and keep you updated. So I appreciate you tuning in and, uh, look forward to sharing the next update.